What up, dude bros? I'm Frank. This is another series overview. This one's for Rival, updated for 2023. I'll introduce you to the Rival series, show you all the blasters that are available, show you them firing, and then end with my top picks. For more details on any blaster I'm about to go over, type that blaster name into my channel for a dedicated video review on that blaster. So, what is the Rival series? Rival blasters shoot the Rival rounds. These are foam spherical rounds, or balls, and their performance is generally pretty good. The average velocity is between 90 and 100 FPS for most Rival blasters. And these rounds shoot pretty accurately, especially compared to nerf elite blasters. The origin of Rival is high-speed tag. The idea is not to be as tactical, but to effectively launch foam into your friend's chest. Just <laughs> flinging foam, bros. <laughs> I like Rival because it's a really good balance in performance and pain level, so even a casual can have a lot of fun. I like to hit what I'm aiming at, and I like to go for really precise shots when I'm flinging foam, but if you're playing with someone who's a little more casually minded and you're shooting them with a 150 FPS half dart launcher, that can ruin their day. That can be uncomfortable if you get hit in the neck or the face. Rival rounds are great because you have high performance, but it doesn't hurt to get hit by them. And I mostly like Rival because of the use of hoppers. Hoppers are super fast to reload and it's really great for perpetual fun. It's not really rule based, it's just flinging foam for fun. You throw out a few Percy's with hopper extensions, a few Prometheus's, and okay, a couple Kronos blasters and a couple thousand rounds of ammo, and you can just non-stop nerf for an hour straight. You don't need to pause and say, hey guys, everybody reload your tactical magazines. You just grab a bunch of rounds, throw them in the hopper, and keep flinging foam. Overall, I think it's my favorite series of nerf, and it is what I play most often in my house. It's performance oriented to the people who care about hitting what they're aiming at, but it's not alienating or too painful to the casuals. So it's great for everyone experienced and novice alike. So that's my introduction to the Rival series, broadly speaking. Now I will go over all the blasters one by one, starting out with spring primaries. First, the Takedown. This is a spring-powered pump-action blaster with an internal eight-round magazine. Achieves an average chrono velocity of 88 feet per second, which is a little slow for Rival. I'd say the Takedown is a better plinker rather than a legitimate primary. Having an internal magazine of only eight rounds is really, really low capacity for Rival. With Nerf Elite, it's not high capacity, but in Rival, compared to the Prometheus and Perseus and Nemesis and other blasters, eight rounds is very small. But still a fun plinking blaster if you're into that. That is the takedown. Next is the Forerunner. The Forerunner is a spring-powered pump-action 12-round internal magazine fed blaster. It's similar to the takedown, but it has a slightly higher capacity and a different style grip. And this gets a chrono average of about 79 feet per second, which is a little low for Rival. That is the Forerunner. Next up is the Side Swipe in the Curve Shot subseries of Rival. This is a spring-powered blaster with a side prime action. The priming handle can be moved to the other side if you prefer that. This has a 12-round capacity that's stored in a built-in internal magazine right here. And you have little cutouts in the magazine so you can see your ammo capacity while you're shooting. The chrono velocity on this one is about 91 feet per second. The Curve Shot sub-series blasters have an adjustable muzzle up front here. So in the upward position, the hop-up system adds a little bit of arc upward, and then you can also angle it if you want to shoot around a wall or something. It's very much a gimmick because you can achieve the exact same thing by just tilting the blaster a little bit, but whatever, I still think the form factor of this blaster is pretty cool and it holds pretty well in the hand. But of course, a 12-round internal magazine as a rival primary is pretty low for the rival series. But that is the Sideswipe. Next up is the Helix, which is also in the Curve Shot subseries. This blaster is spring powered pump action with a 20 round capacity that's fed by a gravity hopper. However, this is a limited hopper compared to other hopper blasters in the Rival series. This has two very distinct channels. It's almost like a magazine without a spring because of how rigid the guide is, compared to something like the Nemesis or the Prometheus, which is just a big hopper of balls. And because it's a gravity hopper instead of a spring powered magazine, it is a little bit finicky. When you prime the blaster, you need to be tilting the blaster down a little bit. Otherwise, you're just going to dry fire. But this has a chrono velocity of about 94 feet per second and it also has the adjustable curve shot muzzle up front. But as far as spring primaries go with rival blasters, this is solid because of the fast reload rate compared to something like the Artemis or Hades, which takes a little bit more dexterity to load. This is hopper fed with gravity, so you can very quickly just dump your balls in there and keep going. It's not a perfect system, but it has merit for sure. That is the Helix. Next up is the Jupiter in the Edge subseries of Rival. The Jupiter is a spring powered bolt action blaster with a 10 round internal magazine. When it came out, this bolt action system was pretty fun to play with, but now if you're really into the bolt action feel, I would recommend a Shelling and Kieran or an Ultra Faro. Those actions are more fun to play with. This is a really short stroking system. It feels like you're using just a 22 because it's only chambering a tiny little rival round instead of a longer dart. But it has a 91 FPS chrono velocity and it does make you feel more like a sniper. For the rival series, this is a unique blaster. And I think it cosmetically looks pretty cool. That is the Jupiter. Next up is the Saturn, which is also in the Edge subseries. The Saturn is a spring powered pump action blaster with a 10 round internal magazine. With a chrono average of 92 feet per second, it shoots pretty okay for the rival series. You buy this one because you like the looks and because you like the form factor, it does feel really cool to use such a large shotgun. I fling foam with pretty sweaty palms, so I have a hard time holding on to this grip. You might get some of that adhesive 
of back sandpaper or grip tape, but it's a pretty fun plinker. That is the Saturn. Next up is the Hypnos. The Hypnos is a spring-powered pump-action spring-powered blaster that uses the Rival 12-round magazines. Chrono average of 91 feet per second, which is okay for Rival. This blaster has more traditional ergonomics than the other blasters I've covered so far. Plus, it uses a removable magazine. This magazine system is pretty unique, though, because it goes in sideways. So you pull it out like this and then push it back in. It kind of reminds me of like a P90 reload, but that means you don't have a giant magazine sticking out of the bottom of the blaster, so it's a little bit slimmer in that way. If you're going to use a Springer in the Rival series, I'd really recommend one with removable magazines like this or a really high capacity. Compared to a lot of the flywheel higher capacity blasters, you're just going to get outgunned if you have an internal mag of like eight rounds. Having removable magazines lets you keep more magazines that are preloaded on your gear for a really fast reload, which just makes it more battle effective. And the Rival series, of course, is a battle series. But that is the Hypnos. Next up is the Apollo. There are a bunch of different versions of the Apollo out, but they're all mechanically pretty much the same. Blue, Red, Mandalorian, Deadpool, even more. But the Apollo is one of the first Rival Blasters that came out. It's spring-powered, top prime, and magazine-fed. The prime action isn't mechanically difficult, but because it's at the top and your other hand is way down here, I've seen younger people without big, strong hands kind of do this and really fail to prime this one. So if you're a younger nerfer trying to play with Rival, this probably isn't the right one for you. One of the pump action blasters or the other side prime blasters will be easier for your smaller hands. But the Apollo gets a chrono average of about 97 feet per second, so it's pretty good for Rival. And having detachable magazines allow you to quickly reload, which is more battle practical. The Apollo actually comes with a seven round mag, but I can't find it, but it is compatible with the 12 round rival mags. An oldie, but a goodie. That is the Apollo. Next up is the Helios, which I actually don't have in my studio. But the Helios is very similar to the Apollo, but the priming handle is just slightly on the side instead of on the top, which in my opinion makes it easier to prime, especially if you have younger, smaller hands. But it includes a seven round mag. It is compatible with the longer 12 round rival mags though. And the Helios has a chrono average of about 92 feet per second, which is okay for rival. If you have both the Helios Helios and the Apollo both available at the same price, I would pick the Helios. But the Apollos are everywhere, especially used, so you can get them at a much lower price. But that is the Helios. Next up is the Pathfinder. This blaster's spring-powered, pump-action, magazine-fed. Chrono average of 89 feet per second, which is a little low for Rival. But you buy this one because you like this super cool form factor. I absolutely love the way this one looks and feels in the hands. I'm super bummed Hasbro forced us to use these irons. They didn't put a standard Rival rail on the top for whatever reason, because I don't really like these irons. They look cool in the pictures, but then you use them and you're like, what? I don't get it. But similar effectiveness to the Helios and the Apollo, with just with a different form factor. Pump action is a little bit faster for sustained fire. And this magazine is orange, so it looks a little different, but this blaster is compatible with the standard clear 12-round mags. That is the Pathfinder. Next up is the Atlas. The Atlas is spring-powered, pump action, and magazine-fed, but this blaster is very unique because it shoots two balls at once as a shotgun. So it has a 12-round magazine, but it only has six shots per magazine. The loading is horizontal instead of vertical, like the Helios, so it's a little bit weird, but it's very space-efficient because it doesn't have the magazine magazine sticking out of the bottom of the blaster. This is a really unique blaster because it's a two-shot shotgun. I wouldn't recommend buying this unless you specifically want a two-shot shotgun. Having a 12-round magazine capacity is already pretty low in the Rival series, but this is only six trigger pulls because it shoots two at once, which is a very low shot capacity for a blaster of this size in the Rival series. And in my experience, it shotguns the rounds so dang close together that it's not a very useful spread within Rival. And it is special because it has a 91 FPS chrono average with both rounds. Most of the time, Nerf makes shotguns shoot way, way slower than their single-shot counterparts. So that's pretty cool. That is the Atlas. Next up is the Artemis. The Artemis is a spring-powered, pump-action, slam-fire-enabled 30-round internal magazine blaster. Even though they're clear and they look similar, this is not the standard rival magazine. This is a built-in magazine. But it has a 30-round capacity for a very small footprint. Chrono average of only 89 feet per second, which is a little slow, but its capacity makes up for that, in my opinion. Artemis is a legitimately good spring primary for rival. High capacity, comfortable, slam-fire-enabled. It's pretty solid. But that is the Artemis. Next is the rival Hades, which is essentially the Artemis is Big Brother. It is the same magazine concept as the Artemis, but the Artemis only carries 30 rounds. This one holds 60. Sure, loading 60 rounds into this takes a little while, especially compared to like hoppers using the Prometheus and the Nemesis, but it's still awesome. You don't have any giant magazines sticking out of the bottom like with the Apollo. It's all built in there and very streamlined. The Hades has a chrono average of about 87 feet per second. It has slam fire in a 60 round capacity, a really solid spring primary option in the Rival series. That is the Hades. That's it for the spring primaries in the Rival series. Now we're getting to the good stuff the flywheel primaries. Flywheel Master Race! First up is the Zeus, one of the first rival blasters ever. The Zeus is a flywheel-powered, semi-auto, magazine-fed blaster. This has a very interesting magazine system, which definitely takes some practice to get decent at. But it uses the standard rival 12-round magazines. This blaster is not compatible with the seven-round shorter mags. But with the built-in magazine, there's nothing protruding, so it's relatively slim and has a very unique style. Chrono average of about 89 feet per second, and this one runs on six C-type batteries. That is the Zeus. Next up is the Charger. The Charger is a flywheel flywheel powered semi-automatic 12 round blaster, but it has a built-in magazine. It is not compatible with the normal rival 12 round mag.
sides, this one is built in. Chrono average of about 98 feet per second, and this one also requires six C-type batteries. I think you buy this one because you really like the way that it looks. It kind of reminds a lot of us of the P90. But as far as performance goes, it lacks. It doesn't have removable magazines. With a flywheeler, you dump your load really fast. You want to be able to reload quickly or have a really high capacity. This doesn't have either, so I'd say this is more of a plinker rather than a battle effect of rival blaster. But that is the charger. Next up is the Hurra. This blaster is a flywheel-powered, semi-automatic, magazine-fed blaster. It is compatible with the standard rival mags. It includes a 12-round, but it is compatible with the 7-rounders as well. It has a chrono average of about 98 feet per second, which is pretty good in rival. Now, it requires six C-type batteries, but it's also compatible with the Nerf brand rechargeable battery, which looks like this, which I would recommend if you're consistently running a blaster that's compatible with this. It's lighter than alkalines, its performance is better than alkalines, and in the long run, it's cheaper, because those C batteries are not cheap, man. If you want to run a flywheeler in the rival series and you don't want a hopper, this is probably one of your best options. Keep in mind, with a semi-auto blaster shooting the 12-round mags, especially if you're competing against a Prometheus, you're going to be shooting so much ammo, you're going to be doing a ton of reloads. Even so, the Hurra is a pretty solid blaster. Next up is the Chaos. The Chaos is a flywheel-powered, fully automatic, magazine-fed blaster with a 40-round capacity. This is a proprietary magazine that is only compatible with the Chaos. Loading it is a little bit tricky, but at the time, having a 40-round capacity of full auto with the performance of rival rounds was unstoppable. It was absolutely groundbreaking at the time and so much fun. And the Chaos has a chrono velocity of about 101 feet per second. And the Chaos runs on six D-type batteries or the rechargeable rival battery, which again, I would recommend this rechargeable battery gives you a higher muzzle velocity and in this case, a slightly higher rate of fire. So better performance all around. That is the Chaos. It came, it was awesome for about a year until the next blasters came out. <laughs> Nowadays, there's not as much of a reason to buy the Chaos because of the fully automatic hopper fed blasters that we have. Compared to a hopper, dealing with this magazine is just a total drag. It's very slow, it's cumbersome, and I have accidentally opened this up and flicked 40 rifle rounds all over more than a dozen times. So compared to modern hoppers, this is a little bit outdated. That is the Chaos. Next up is the Nemesis. The Nemesis is a flywheel powered, hopper fed, fully automatic blaster. It has a hopper capacity or an ammo capacity of over 100 rounds. And the benefit of using a hopper is you can just grab your rounds and dump them in. You don't have to load them into a spring powered magazine, which means you spend less time teching your gun, reloading your gun, and setting it all up, and more time flinging foam, which is what we're all about, right? Flinging foam, bro! As a chrono average of about 102 feet per second, this one runs on six D-type batteries or the Nerf rechargeable. And once again, it's definitely worth buying. You get a slightly higher muzzle velocity and a slightly higher rate of fire. And it's lighter weight. These D batteries are super heavy and pretty expensive. I was in love with the Nemesis when it first came out, and I still like using it quite a bit. The rate of fire is not as quick as other rival full autos on the market, but it still has a great capacity. It's easy to reload and very traditional ergonomics. It holds more traditionally compared to something like the Perseus or the Prometheus. There are advantages to the Perseus and the Prometheus, but even now, you are still very competitive if you go buy one of these. But there are a few drawbacks to using a gravity-fed hopper like this. First, it uses a conveyor belt feeding system, so when you pull down the trigger, sometimes it takes a second or two to actually start firing rounds. If the rounds are too far back, the conveyor belt takes a second to load. Furthermore, being a gravity-fed hopper, it's reliant on gravity. If you turn this upside down and try to shoot it, it just doesn't feed. Compared to the Chaos, using spring-powered magazines, you can turn that upside down and shoot it just fine. So unless you're like an astronaut trying to fling foam in space or something, using a gravity-fed hopper is typically pretty manageable. You just have to be aware of it, keep your blaster upright, and shake it around a little bit to get the balls untrapped in the corners. Astronauts on a spacewalk flinging foam at each other? Oh man, I'd, I'd like to see that video. Come on, NASA, do it. Do it! <laughs> But that is the Nemesis. Next up is the rival Perseus. Unfortunately, I don't have an unmodified Perseus in my studio right now. But the Perseus is a flywheel-powered, fully automatic, hopper-fed blaster with a 50-round capacity. Chrono average of about 104 feet per second, which is pretty good for rival. And it's also worth noting the Perseus rate of fire is noticeably faster than the Nemesis and the Chaos, which isn't always a good thing, but it is often a very good thing. But it's worth noting, without putting on an aftermarket hopper extension like the one that Out of Darts sells, the Perseus hopper is incredibly annoying to use. The whole thing opens rather than just a select slot, so if you tip the blaster by accident when you're loading, you dump your entire hopper on accident, which I've done, like, a bunch. So if you want to run a Percy's, I highly recommend the Out of Darts hopper extension. It's a 3D printed container that snaps into the top of the blaster, expanding the capacity to over 200 rounds, which is awesome, and you don't have to open the Percy's blaster to install this hopper extension. And the Percy's also includes a rechargeable battery. You can't run it on alkalines, which I think is great. Including rechargeable stuff is just more convenient in the long run, but that is the Percy's. And last for the flywheelers is the Prometheus. The Prometheus 
Atias is a flywheel-powered, fully automatic, hopper-fed blaster with a 240-round capacity. They advertise the capacity of 200 rounds, but it easily holds 240 rounds. This is very similar to the Percy's in the Nemesis in its operation, its use of the conveyor belt feeding system, and its use of the gravity-fed hopper system. So just like those blasters, you can't tip it upside down and shoot it. It does rely on gravity. And the Prometheus form factor is noticeably different than the Percy's and Nemesis, which are designed to be shouldered. This one cannot be shouldered. You're supposed to hold this down low, which is not always a bad thing, but in my opinion, it does get a little bit old, especially in like a basement war when you want to be able to snap shoot and put your blaster up over a couch and shoot. This gets kind of weird to aim it up over something like that. But the Prometheus shoots about 93 feet per second, which is pretty reasonable for rival. It also comes with a rechargeable battery pack, which is proprietary to the Prometheus. This is not cross compatible with any other blaster, but it's rechargeable, so it's one less thing to think about. This is the overdone, pay to win, I just want to stomp everyone in my tracks blaster. If that's what you want, buy the Prometheus. You will love it. <laughs> but that is the Prometheus. That is it for the flywheel primaries. Now moving to some pistols or some less substantial spring-powered blasters. First, the Knockout. The Knockout is a spring-powered bottom prime single-shot breech-loading blaster. 88 FPS chrono average, which isn't great for a primary, but for a secondary, that's fine. This is intended as sort of a backup or emergency pistol because of its size and very low capacity. I would consider this to be more of a plinker. It is pretty fun to use the breech-loading system, but it's not super battle effective for the rival standard, but still pretty fun to play with. That is the knockout. Next is the Fate. The Fate is a spring-powered rear prime single-shot breech-loading pistol. In that sense, it's very similar to the knockout and other blasters I'm about to go over, but it has a unique profile. It looks and holds more like a traditional pistol. One-shot capacity and 95 FPS chrono velocity, which is pretty solid. But again, a single-shot breech-loading pistol is not super battle effective for rivals, so this is more of a plinker or a target shooter. That is the Fate. Next is the Pilot. This is a single-shot bottom prime blaster with a really cool breech system. It's enjoyable just to like use and play with this one, even if it is not battle effective. And because how they designed the the breaching system, it's super easy to shotgun load, so you can shove two or three balls in there if you want a shotgun blast. Obviously at a much lower muzzle velocity, but it's an option. Only an 83 FPS muzzle velocity out of this one, which is a little slower than some of the other single shot blasters. In a battle against other humans, you're gonna notice that muzzle velocity drop, but shooting targets or whatever is still plenty fun. That is the pilot. Next up is the Flex. The Flex is a spring-powered bottom prime single shot breech loading pistol. I feel like I'm repeating myself a lot now. A lot of these blasters are really mechanically similar, but the Flex is part of the curve shot sub-series within Rival, so it has the cool adjustable muzzle up front. By default, the hop-up system shoots straight up like this, but you can turn it to the left so you can angle your rounds left or right. Or again, you can just tilt the blaster and achieve the exact same thing. Super gimmicky, sure, but it is a cool looking blaster. And a chrono average of about 85 feet per second. For sidearms and emergency backup pistols, that's pretty acceptable. That is the flex. Next up is the Heracles. I, I'm never going to say that word right, ever. This blaster is a spring-powered, top-prime, internal magazine-fed blaster with a five-round capacity. Single-shot blaster, though, pretty normal operation with about a 97 FPS average. This is pretty much a rival chronos with a bunch of extra plastic added right here. But that is the Heracles. <laughs> Next up is the Finisher. This is a spring-powered top prime magazine fed blaster with an included seven round mag. 85 FPS chrono average. This is kind of a weird tweener between pistol and primary and an 85 FPS chrono average. That is the Finisher. Next is the Mercury. This blaster is a spring-powered side prime blaster with an internal magazine with a capacity of five rounds. I have the priming handle installed on the left, but you can unscrew it and thread it into the right if you prefer that side. Chrono average of about 92 feet per second. This is a pretty solid sidearm. Side prime might be preferred to somebody with younger, weaker hands. Priming back a stronger spring like in the Rival series is tricky for a smaller, younger hand because you have to grip onto the grip and then pull back at the same time. For an older person, it's not a big deal, but if you're younger, this is a lot easier to prime back because you're not wasting any effort gripping the handle. You can just push straight back on the bar. So it's not for everyone, but it has merit compared to the Kronos. But for most people, go buy a Kronos. <laughs> that is the Mercury. Next is the Vision. This blaster's spring-powered rear pull handle prime action like that features an eight-round internal magazine, which can be loaded through the side right here, and a Chrono average of about 92 feet per second. I personally don't really like this priming handle or the overall feel of this blaster. I think the Mercury or the Kronos are the way to go if you're looking for a smaller spring rival blaster. But it definitely has a unique look, so if you're into that, it's a reason to buy it. That is the Vision. Next is the Kronos, one of my favorite rival blasters ever. The Kronos is a spring-powered top prime five-round internal magazine fed blaster. The frame is reasonably sized, so if you're looking for a holsterable sidearm, this is a good one. Compared to a lot of the single-shot breech loaders, this has a five-round capacity and a very good ergonomic design. A 90 FPS FPS chrono average, which isn't awesome, but definitely not bad. This has been the go-to spring pistol for the Rival series for years and years now. You cannot go wrong with a Kronos. But like I mentioned, if you have smaller, younger hands, gripping onto this blaster and then pulling back does take some force. But that is the Kronos. Next up is the Roundhouse. The Roundhouse is a spring-powered top prime blaster with a 15 round capacity. 15 rounds in a pistol is absolutely outrageous. This is incredibly high capacity. The loading system is very similar to the Artemis and the Hades, which is pretty cool. Chrono average of about 83 feet per second 
second, which isn't great, but I think it makes up for it in high capacity. It's worth noting though, this is a very big blaster. It's super wide and chonky. So putting it into a holster or throwing it on your hip would be a lot more mass compared to the Kronos. Granted, it has three times the capacity of the Kronos. So, you know, make that decision for yourself. I've used a few of these now and I've had issues with the feeding system. It's not super perfect. So not the smoothest, but if you're looking for a super high capacity pistol, this is it. That is the Roundhouse. And that is all of the pistols in the Rival series. Now we'll go over some of the prop blasters that Nerf has made over the years. These are not necessarily battle effective blasters. They're just cool, prop oriented, very cosmetically interesting blasters that happen to shoot rival rounds. First up is the Overwatch Soldier 76 blaster. This blaster is a flywheel powered, fully automatic, hopper fed blaster with a 30 round capacity. Has a chrono average of 96 feet per second, which is really good for rival. But the hopper reminds me of the Percy's because it's really open. So if you tip the blaster by accident while reloading, you're gonna dump your whole hopper out. So it is really effective in a certain sense, but it's not like super effective compared to other rival blasters. It's just good compared to other prop crap that they've made over the years. It's also worth noting the weighting and ergonomics on this one is just tough to use. I'm a big dude, I'm about 6'4 in height, and I even struggle to really wield this one well. It's not designed to feel really good in the hands, it's designed to look like the blaster from the video game. But it looks super cool and it performs better than most prop blasters, so that's kind of what it has going for it. That is the Soldier 76 blaster. Next up is the Overwatch Diva Blaster. This blaster is spring powered, top prime, with an internal magazine of only three rounds. Chrono average of about 89 feet per second, which isn't too shabby. And this has a cool recoil feature when you pull the trigger. This thing flicks back to simulate recoil or whatever. If you're really into the D.Va character within Overwatch, that's a reason to buy it. Otherwise, go buy a Kronos. This is a lower capacity, less comfortable pink Kronos. But that is the D.Va Blaster. Next is the Overwatch McCree Blaster. This blaster is a spring-powered, top-prime, breech-loading, single-shot blaster. The priming handle is up here, and when you prime it, the cylinder pops open like that, and that exposes the single barrel, which you rear load like that. Chrono velocity of only 74 feet per second, no doubt because of this weird breech. This one is definitely for the prop people. You buy this one because you really like the way it looks. This is kind of a weird one to handle. It is fun, but for me, it got kind of old pretty fast. The ergonomics of the grip and just using this priming system, it's a bit odd. That is the McCree Blaster. Next up is the Overwatch Reaper Blaster. This blaster is a spring-powered rear prime action system like that, and it has an internal magazine capacity of eight rounds. It's similar to the Takedown and the Forerunner, but it doesn't have pump action and the ergonomics aren't quite as good as the Forerunners. You buy this one because you like the way that it looks and you connect to the Overwatch game and the character and all of that stuff. Only an 81 FPS chrono average, which isn't great for Rival, but compared to a lot of the nerf prop stuff that is pretty good. But a very unique look and it's mildly fun to use. That is the Reaper Blaster. Next up is the Star Wars Stormtrooper Blaster. This blaster is a spring powered side prime magazine fed blaster. The prime action is sort of like a Helios or like an Apollo on the side. You can pull back and then let go. And this priming handle also collapses if you're more of a prop person and you don't want this thing sticking out all the time. Chrono velocity of 90 feet per second, which is within the normal ranges for Rival and for a prop blaster, that's pretty good. And it uses standard Rival magazines. It includes a seven round mag. This is the 12 rounder. You buy this one because you like the way that it looks. If you don't care about Star Wars, I'd recommend the Helios or the Apollo. They're very similar, but way cheaper. But as far as prop blasters go, this is actually a pretty good one. That is the Star Wars Stormtrooper Blaster. Woo! And that is all of the rival blasters. There are a ton of them out there. Now I'll show you all the blasters firing.
that is the firing demo for the Rival series overview. If you want to check out more firing footage or see more details on each individual blaster, remember to type that blaster name into my channel and you'll find the dedicated video review. Now for my 2023 top picks for the Rival series. This time I have four, four and a half top picks. I've chosen these blasters because I actually like all of them. I didn't really have to struggle to find top picks for Rival. Again, Rival is my favorite series. These are the blasters I use most often when I fling foam in my house. So top picks in no particular order, starting with the Kronos. Of course, you know the Kronos is on my top picks list. This blaster is awesome. It's comfortable, it's practical, it has a decent capacity given its size, and you can put it into a holster. It is the go-to side armor pistol in the Rival series. Does it make a good primary? No, not at all. But that's not what it's designed for. It's supposed to be a sidearm. And in that role, it does a stellar job. That's why the Kronos is on my top picks list. Next up is kind of a double whammy, the Artemis and the Hades. I'm putting these together on my top picks list because they're essentially the same thing on two different sizes. These are on my top picks list because they're incredibly high rate of fire, slam fire enabled, and they're fun to use. The vertical grip just doesn't get old. Even if you have sweaty palms, you can still slam on this all day. It doesn't require any grip, so if you're shooting a few hundred rounds, your hand doesn't fatigue. It might sound like no big deal to you, but pick up your Saturn and shoot it a thousand times in a row without stopping and tell me your grip isn't struggling by the end of that. If you're looking for a spring primary in the Rival series, check out the Artemis or the Hades. And choosing between them is just how big of a blaster do you want. The Hades is a pretty large blaster. If you're a smaller human, this might get a little bit cumbersome for you. I handle it just fine, but I'm larger than average. And the Artemis still has a 30 round capacity. Given its form factor, that's still awesome. You will be satisfied with either one of these if you want to use a Springer in the Rival series. That's why both the Artemis and the Hades are on my top picks list. The next top pick, the rival Prometheus. If you want to take something out of the box and stomp absolutely everybody in a foam flinging battle, buy a Prometheus. 240 round capacity, it's super easy and fast to reload. You just open this and you dump your rounds in. Granted, the ergonomics are a little bit weird. You don't shoulder it, you hold it down low. But you kind of like that. So I just gently sway back and forth and you can just mow people down. It's a fantastic feeling shooting the Prometheus. It's for all those reasons that the Prometheus is obviously on my top picks list. And for my last top pick, I'm kind of cheating because it's not a stock blaster but it's the Perseus with an out of darts hopper extension. This is on my top picks list because it's an incredible amount of firepower, it's super fun to use, and it's very easy to shoulder and use. Don't get me wrong, the Prometheus is awesome and all, but shooting down low like that gets a little old. The Perseus, you can shoulder, you can whip out around a corner and fling foam and then come back in. Snap shooting is just more reasonable with a form factor like this. And with the out of darts hopper extension, you immediately boost your capacity up over 200 rounds. This one happens to have my signature sponge camo paint job on it. This has been my personal primary for years and years, and this is responsible for like hundreds of excellent, very well-placed shots inside my house. I can see like a montage of some of these shots playing out in my head every time I look at this blaster. <laughs> However, without the hopper extension, the Percy's blaster does not even make my top picks list. Without the hopper extension, the little 50 round capacity is just too low capacity. It's kind of annoying to load and it doesn't match its very high rate of fire. So this is only on my top picks list with the hopper extension. So yeah, I'm kind of cheating since it's a modified blaster and a stock blaster overview, but whatever. It's my video series. I'll do whatever I want. Rules are meant to be broken. <laughs> but it's super easy to load and if I wanted to hand this to a casual I can teach them how to use it very quickly and they can become a very powerful foam flinger very quickly and sometimes when you want to hook a friend you want to give them power to let them know how fun it is you don't just hand them like a knockout when you're using a blaster like this and stomp them they're not going to want to play nerf with you again so it's for all those reasons the Percy's with the out of darts hopper extension is on my top picks list and this is my personal primary I've used this one a ton and I like it quite a lot so the Percy's with the out of darts hopper extension is my final top pick for the rival series that is it for the 2023 rival series series overview. Oh my gosh, Nerf has so many blasters in the Rival series. Hopefully you now have a good understanding of what Rival is and what blasters are out there. But that is it for the Rival series overview updated for 2023. Thanks so much for watching bros and as always, stay tactical.